Hello, I'm Owen Vichel, Technical Support Engineer for NMEA Specialist ActiSense. Today I've come down to visit one of our customers, uh, John Grandshaw, JG Tech in Weymouth. Been a reseller of ActiSense products for a long time. Uh, we get, we're, today we're going to be showcasing uh, some new features available with NGW beta firmware and uh, an update to the EMU1 as well. So what is new with the NGW1 then? Well the most notable updates are the addition of a fast heading option for getting HDT at 10 Hz. That's been a very popular request and it now supports DSC and DSE for the digital selective calling with the distress messages. Also the firmwares, the two different types of firmware that are available work slightly different to the, to the, the current options that are available. In the AIS version now, we have every single conversion that the NGW1 can do is all enabled by default and it will operate at the standard AIS board rate of 38,400 board, that high speed board rate. The, the standard version of firmware will have a subset of all of those conversions because it has the, the normal standard 4,800 board bandwidth for 0183. So we've, because of that lower speed, we've had to reduce a lot of the conversions that it does, otherwise we'll flood that bandwidth and you'll start to drop bytes of NMEA 0183 data. Okay, morning John. This is John I was mentioning just now from JG Technologies in Weymouth. Uh, like I said, you've been a customer with ActiSense now for quite some time. What is it that you specifically like about the brand that's made you stay with us for so long? Um, the reliability is the main thing. I'm very little customer returns. And the product does what it says on the tin. Excellent, that's a nice, short, succinct answer. So today we're looking at the new uh, NGW and, and EMU firmware for you. Um, what is it specifically about the NGW1 that um, is going to solve for you? It's going to cut down the amount of devices I have because the NGW1 can now do a fast heading output which will feed my radar on 0183. And also it can connect to my um, DSC radio to do um, tracking. The NGW1 is installed in John's boat now. We've got, as you can see on his plotter he's got some uh, AIS targets being, being shown up there. We did encounter an issue in, in getting the NGW1 installed to start with and it's not the fault of the NGW1. It's the common issue I see on the technical support desk at ActiSense. Um, I'll show you a bit more about it inside of NMEA Reader. So the issue we had with John's network was the, the uh, even though the NMEA 0183 LED was flashing on the NGW1 to indicate it was receiving valid 0183 sentences, none of the AIS targets were being shown on, on the Lawrence display that I showed you earlier. As I said, this is a common issue that I find on the tech support desk and the way to solve this is using, if you have one, an NGT, an NMEA reader, open up the network view, which you can access from the bottom, find your ActiSense NGW1, get the source address number, you can see it's source address number one here, and then go back and find the data view tab, and then look at all the data that's coming from source address number one. You can see all of that data there is coming in and it's showing you that the, the, the information is available there, which indicates that you need to set up the receiving device to display that data from the NGW1. So the new ActiSense NGW config tool can be found inside a toolkit. To start, you need to open up the COM port to the NGT, same way you would in NMEA Reader. Find your NGW1 in the serial or CAN device list, and then you can either right click on it to show the options that are available to load from device and show you the configuration that's in there at the moment. You can select the same option from the ribbon menu at the top or you can start a new config. I'm going to load from device for this. Give your configuration a friendly name and then you're presented with the NMEA 0183 RX and TX enable lists and then it, by selecting the other tab you can choose the same options for, for NMEA 2000. So all of the ticks that you can see are, are the conversions that the NGW1 can, can do by default. And as I said earlier, the AIS version now has all of the conversions that are uh, compatible with the NGW1 enabled by default. So the only option you're doing here is reducing those conversions if by, by unticking them. You can change the board rate with the drop down list above the enable lists, and you can choose a new base configuration. This is where you can select the standard configuration of conversion list. As you can see, some of those ticks went away. That's just a subset of 
of all the conversions that can be done or you can choose the new fast heading option you see all, all of the conversions have gone away now except for the ones that are needed for fast heading and you can configure the transmit interval by selecting that drop down list there it's already at 10 hertz now so what i would do if i wanted to configure this device for just fast heading is, is send that to the device You'll notice with the standard configuration, the estimated NMEA 0183 transmit load goes to a red bar and indicates 176% load. This is only an indicator of what will happen if all of the enabled messages are being received at the same time. So this is a worst case scenario. Obviously in reality that's never going to happen. Moving on to the EMU, it's been a heavily requested feature for users to be able to set up their own gauges outside of what already exists in the preset options inside of Toolkit. We've now added that feature to the latest beta firmware and as you can see inside of the, the new Toolkit there will be a custom gauge manager option. Create new, give your gauge a name, select the parameter for which you wish to configure so engine oil pressure for example, choose the unit of measurement and then you simply need to measure the voltage on the back of your analog gauge, read what it's outputting at different stages and then enter those values into the custom gauge manager and then save it. See we already have a test gauge in there, you can also edit an existing gauge, so that's a, a, currently a test gauge set up for fluid level and we've measured it at these voltages with these output parameters. Then when you go to configure your EMU, choose the new config option at the top. Make sure you have EMU selected and the type. Give your configuration a name. Now if you remember that test gauge that I showed you was for a fluid level gauge. So if I enable one of these options for fluid level and then I can select my gauge from this list and you can see it's available there at the bottom. That's my new custom gauge that I've set up myself. And that that would apply for any gauge that you set up. So if I were to configure an engine oil pressure gauge, then I'd need to set that parameter on the left hand side and choose the gauge from the same list. So that's it for this case study. I hope you found it useful in showcasing the new additions to the NGW1 and the EMU1. If you have any further questions or want more information, go to actisense.com or contact me via support at actisense.com. Many thanks to John at JG Tech today. If you need to buy any Actisense products, go to jgtech.com. That's jgtech.com. I'll see you next time.